Beautiful. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Danielle Coe. I'm the CEO and founder of Black Women in Clinical Research. The mission of Black Women in Clinical Research is to educate, empower, support, and help Black women thrive in the clinical research industry. We have WCG that's here tonight to speak about careers in clinical research at WCG. So if I understand this correctly, it's the, the Black women in WCG? Okay, so yes. we can go ahead and get started. We can um, have all the speakers introduce themselves. Thank you, Danielle. And, and actually, they're going to do the intro when we share about spotlights. And so, uh, Danielle, I, I know you have our uh, very brief uh, presentation deck. Did you want to share that or uh, allow me to share it? Sorry, I had you on mute. Yes, you can share it. Hold on, please. Okay. Okay, please let All me right, know. There we go. All right. Can you guys see? Does it say Black Women in Clinical Research? Welcome to WCG. Yes. Wonderful. So we'll go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, um, we want to thank uh, you, Danielle, and the entire membership with Black Women in Clinical Research for even inviting us and having us be a part of today. So today we're going to uh, recognize, I know you just did your welcome kind of opening statements, but our goal today was very briefly to tell you, well, who is WCG? Um, yeah. I'd like to spotlight a few of the uh, Black women of WCG who are really here to talk with you about the careers and opportunities we have in our company. And then certainly we're excited to open up the floor for just any panel discussion, any Q&A that uh, you may have. So I will start. So my name is Tamara Bowles. I'm Vice President of Human Capital Management. And this year marks actually 15 years for me being at WCG. Uh, but prior to that, I've had the fortunate opportunity. I've worked at a CRO. I've worked at Pharma before, and uh, I know I've been a part of some of your events. I'm just really excited to be a part of here today, uh, really talking with you about other careers in clinical research. Um, it was amazing how this kind of was born in that um, as we had an opportunity to participate in the other panel that you had, Daniel, um, we wanted to really give an opportunity to say, hey, there are a lot of careers out there. And candidly, as Danielle says, we always speak the truth in your meetings. These jobs don't have to exist in a CRO. I've been in a CRO. I've been in a pharma. So we thought, well, we'd like to tell you a little bit more about a, at least our company who is contributing significantly in this field, but you may not even know anything about us. So first and foremost, I couldn't uh, talk about WCG without at least defining who we are relative to our mission, our values, um, the principles that we really use from a guiding perspective. Uh, we like to talk to people about our mission being focused on saving lives. Now, no, we're not on the bench coming up with those therapeutic treatments and things like that, but what we do try to do is look for opportunities to really bring efficiency uh, to a process where we know clinical research has been really reluctant to do things a different way. And so in just a minute, I'm gonna tell you about all of the different parts of our business where we are actually delivering either a service or a technology around clinical research and partner with many of the companies that you might be thinking about, we're right there in the middle helping them deliver in those ways. So at WCG, we like to say our tagline is, we bring new solutions to old problems. Clinical research has been around a long time. You're gonna hear about one of the, the divisions of our business that uh, has been around for over 50 years. And yet we know that research is done the exact same way all the time. They conduct trials the exact same way. But we decided that we wanted to take a different approach. So we organized ourselves originally around the premise of looking at the ethical review. So if many of you have heard about IRBs, especially if you work at a, a CRO or a pharma, you know, you're going to an IRB to get the uh, approval or the consent on the clinical trial to begin with. So that's where we started. So back in 2012, we actually acquired a company called Western IRB. You might have heard of them called WERB. And WERB was the first central or commercial IRB not affiliated with an institution or say an academic medical center. And 
uh, believe it or not, WERB was founded by a, a woman. Her name was Dr. Angela Bowen. And in uh, uh, about February of 2012, we acquired WERB. And shortly thereafter, in May of 2012, we acquired Copernicus Group IRB. Uh, again, founded by a woman, uh, Sharon Hill Price. And together, WCG was born. So that's where our name even comes from, is WERB Copernicus Group. So if you think about the space that we've initially operated in, you probably think about us as being the IRBs. And certainly that's where we have uh, really the biggest stronghold. We are the largest IRB uh, in the North Americas here in the US and with over almost 400 employees just focused on human subject protection. If you've worked on a clinical trial, we probably touch at least 90% of all the investigators that go through clinical trials. We've seen them in one form, shape or fashion through our IRB, but we've grown to be so much more than that. And so over the last several years, primarily through acquisitions and some mergers, um, we really see ourselves as a clinical services organization and we deliver a variety of different things, which we're excited to tell you a little bit more about tonight. The one thing that I, you know, I recognize, and especially since if many of you, or if you're already in this space or you're thinking about this space is, how, how does it work? Well, we have five divisions of our business, but we recognize you know, there are important stakeholders within this clinical trial process. So many of you are probably familiar with the sponsors, in this case, the pharmaceutical companies, or often the CROs. Well, we work with primarily all of them. Um, and they're an important stakeholder and an important client to us. But we also work very closely with the research that's being done at the site level. And so uh, with those investigators, with those institutions that are conducting the research themselves, and so they're an important part of how we support this process. But for us, again, we do, it's important to recognize the patient community as well. And so through strong advocacy, we're here really to protect the human volunteers that are in clinical trials. And so we have a number of services really focus on delivering to our patient community. But WCG is really sitting in the middle of these three huge stakeholders and we're connecting the dots and oftentimes between these parties, either through some service delivery or some technology delivery. And we have five divisions in our organization that make that happen. So when we thought about, well, how does WCG come together? What, what are you here to even serve? It really started with the premise that we wanted to reduce the time and the cost in clinical trials. And so at the end of the day, we studied and looked at, well, what were the reported areas that have and create the most delay, cost the most money and take the most time? And you see this represented in this pie chart, everything from getting the contract negotiated, if you've ever tried to work with the site to get the sponsor contract negotiated, or dare I say, the IRB review. I remember years ago, it could take three to six months to try to get an IRB reviewed at an institution particularly. And so in these different areas, we looked at, these are the places where there may be new solutions to what we know are old problems. And so fast forward to today, and what I'm showing you are actually the logos of all of the different companies that are a part of WCG. Now we consider ourselves, we're all WCG, think of it as the umbrella, but underneath, we actually have all of these different companies that make up WCG. So if you've ever heard of 3WIRE that does patient recruitment or Trifecta, which is one of the most recent acquisitions that we did in November of 2020, all of these companies, when people are trying to figure out, well, you know, how do they fit in? What, what, how do, I don't know how that connects with the IRB and these other pieces. This is how it comes together for us. We're not here trying to be a CRO. We'll leave that to the CROs. They're our customers. We're here to partner with them in really best of class areas where we've looked at companies who are doing things in a transformative way and we brought those companies together. And so with that, we're able to deliver services and solutions that no one else can because they don't have the connections between, for example, the training and patient recruitment. But let me look at this a little bit closer. So when you're trying to figure out, you know, what is it that they really do? 
you know, that's a lot of logos, especially when I talk to people about, you know, the different components of WCG. You may know one of our subsidiary company names, but when we go to, out to the market, we really talk about, you know, the services that we're able to deliver. So I'm going to throw away the logos for a moment and just talk about the way we've organized ourselves in a way to shape how we're able to create some of these career opportunities. So for example, what you'll see is we do segment our ethical review division, which is really focused again on protecting the human subjects involved in clinical research. And so they can't be uh, coerced or influenced by uh, a client who may get other services from us. So we put a firewall up really to protect the integrity of all of those ethical reviews and those decisions on the clinical trial, because we never want uh, the risk to the subjects to outweigh the benefits of the research. We look at that assessment and, and weigh that very carefully. But everything on the, I'll call it to the right of this blue line, represents all of the different clinical service offerings. And we've actually got them somewhat subdivided by the different divisions. So for example, we have our study planning and site optimization, which is really focused on how do we get a clinical trial up and going as quickly as possible. So for example, we do work with helping to get those contracts negotiated at the site level or help with site ID. Next, we have our patient engagement division, which as it says in its name is really focused on how we interact and work with the patient community. So when you hear about companies like 3Wire that are focused on you know, helping companies uh, recruit patients into their clinical trials, that's what they focus on. We have our scientific and regulatory division, which is really, I think of synonymously as safety. So I know you've got some nurses and all kinds of uh, uh, clinical background. And this team is really focused on doing everything from having the safety adjudication committees to even the DSMB committees that are looking at the statistical analysis of the information that comes in the clinical trial and rendering a decision if it's really showing the efficacy of say the, the proposed treatment. And that's our scientific and regulatory. And then last but not least, what I like to think of is our market insights and intelligence, which is really about being a, uh, a thought leader and really educating the industry about what is going on. So if you've ever read a Center Watch weekly report or an FDA news daily bulletin, we literally have reporters out there that are at the FDA or they're on the hill tracking what's going on in this industry, tracking what's going on on a regulatory perspective and uh, putting publications out on a daily, monthly, quarterly basis. Uh, we do books, we, we uh, uh, host seminars. I know Danielle is participating in the MAGI conference that's gonna be coming up shortly. And so we really take seriously our position as really a thought leader and having some um, of what we believe to be some of the best talent in the world, helping to make sure that we're staying abreast of what's going on. And now I'm here in North Carolina. I've been told I talk fast, but I intentionally wanted to get through this fairly quickly so we could just very briefly touch on just the vastness of what WCG is. And we share that because we want this membership to know there are so many opportunities to be in a company like us. And so with that in mind, we are really excited that today in partnership with our Black Women of WCG Employee Resource Group, that we're gonna spotlight a couple of those individuals who are gonna talk even more directly about some of those opportunities. But before, that, before I do that, I wanna uh, call Tina Reddick, who happens to be the chair of our Black Women of WCG ERG, just for her to give you a moment about what this ERG is about. Thanks, Tamara. Thank you. Um, good evening, ladies. Um, thank you again, Danielle, for the opportunity to use this platform tonight uh, to speak and bring to life uh, the mission of our ERG. So I wanted to speak proudly about Black women of WCG, um, not only because I'm the chair and it's my job to be an ambassador and sell it, but because I'm truly proud of the work that we all as a team have accomplished in just the few short months that we've been running. A Black Women in WCG is an employee resource group um, that uh, the, our purpose and our main goal uh, help foster a professional development, um, leadership opportunities, and really drive the retention and advancement of Black women here at WCG. Uh, we strive to create a community uh, that promotes uh, productivity and increases 
awareness, not just for us, um, but for the WCG community as a whole. Um, so with the development of our, plat our information platforms, our mentorship programs, um, being able to more broadly share our agenda uh, with the outside community, uh, and being here tonight is really saying that we wanna support uh, uh, the increasing of the diversity that we have within our company and focus on the things that we need to do um, to help make it more inclusive uh, when, um, when a person enters into the WCG family. So with that being said, um, I'm very proud of the work that we've done. Like I said, thank you so much, Danielle. Um, for this amazing opportunity to kind of showcase what we do, what our company is, and even just our ERG that exists um, creates a lot of opportunity for Black women to advance and strive for, uh, for better. Thank you, Tina. And, and candidly, one of the reasons we felt it important to even start our ERG is because we wanted the rest of WCG to know there, there were a, a group of professional black women in there that have been contributing uh, to the business's success. And so they see us, they, uh, they, uh, they recognize us and uh, it's, it's been a real interesting and fun journey, particularly over the last year as we've uh, really been a, an, a voice to the organization about what they can do to continue to support diversity as well as advance and create a more inclusive environment. But you want to meet our team so you can hear about these jobs. So um, I'd like to first turn it over to Brittany Nelson. Well, hi, everyone. Um, thank you again, Danielle, for having us. Um, so like um, Tamara was saying, um, I, work, I am part of the Ethical Review Division at WCG. So I work for WCG IRB. Um, WCG IRB is recognized as the gold standard of human research protection. Um, like Tamara was saying, you probably have submitted to us, you have heard about us, you've had to send you know, um, PVs to us. You probably have been in contact with WCG IRB before. I actually um, started at WERB and um, WERB was the part of the founding of WCG um, and they were opened in 1968. So we're over 52 years old. Yes. So, it, you know, so it's been around for a long time. And our founder, um, Dr. Bowen, she was interested in, you know, putting women forth in the IRB field. So that is literally our founding is on top of a woman. Um, so with that, I started my career at WERB in October of 2013. I had no idea what a IRB was. I had no clinical research experience. Um, I actually worked with like administrative and IT more than clinical research. Um, I definitely, it was definitely, um, I moved to the city and was looking for a job and they were hiring and, you know, I got hired. So when I say um, like starting out as a BOA was literally my forefront of going in um, into WCG, but also right now we are hiring for 15 IRB operations specialists. So these, like I said, these are entry level. There's no clinical research experience needed. So definitely check that out. And that's definitely my, that's definitely how I got into um, the IRB. After that, um, I moved on to um, become a quality assurance specialist. And this is really where I found my passion for um, clinical research and regulatory. And I, in that I um, reviewed the IT documents and our um, validation systems to make sure that it was Part 11 compliant. So I really dug in deep to learn what regulations were, the different things of how we protect humans, even in technology. Um, so I definitely, found my passion for that. And from there, I um, became an expedite reviewer. So this is a little fun fact. When I first started at WERB, um, when they were telling us about all the positions and all the departments at WERB, I told myself, I want to become an expedite reviewer. That's what I told myself. And so in June of 2017, I became an expedite reviewer. And so I've been an expedite reviewer since June 2017. Um, I lead audit groups that consist of directors, chairs, um, um, meeting chairs, 
I guess you would say, or IRB chairs, um, and also expedited reviewers. So I have definitely have moved into different aspects of the company and actually have grown and been able to thrive and be able to find my place in leadership in my department and being able to um, help out in that way. Um, so I also back up the senior expedited reviewers um, at this point. And so anything that if they're out of town, I'm able to run these reports and do different things. And so I'm just saying like, coming from not knowing anything about an IRB to being on the board at the IRB. It's something that is definitely something to thrive for. So thank you. For thank me. you, Brittany. And I have to brag on Brittany for just a minute. She's also representing the entire division this week in a corporate level uh, panel discussion about women of WCG and highlighting we have several uh, black women that are gonna be in this panel with division presidents and uh, with our CEO support. So really excited. So thank you, Brittany, for uh, being an ambassador for the IRBs. We have Ms. Desiree Underwood. Thank you, Tamara. And um, I'm just glad to be a part of the panel tonight and speak to you all about some of our opportunities and uh, advancement and growth um, within WCG. So my initial background before joining WCG was at the clinical research site. And I had gotten a certification in like EKG and phlebotomy and went back to school for cardiovascular technology, had no clue about this side of clinical research. I would hear about the, um, or see the monitors come to sites and things like that, the CRA positions. And I was like, mm, don't want to travel like that. So I was like, what else is there when I was looking for career advancement? And so I had um, found out about Metavante Proface, which sits in our patient engagement division at a WCG. And I applied for a senior project coordinator position at the time. And so this was about five and a half years ago now. And since then I was able to, you know, move up within the site management department and I was uh, moved into an associate director position. So the opportunity for advancement definitely does exist within our organization, which I was really happy to see because we know that oftentimes you can kind of get stuck in a, a, a particular position when you don't know where your opportunities lie. And so more recently, after working with insight management, I wanted an opportunity to kind of understand the breadth of what WCG had to offer. And so I kind of ventured out and went into process improvement, Lean Six Sigma, um, facilitating trainings that way. And um, now I'm director of the project management organization for WCG. Now, just to spotlight a little more about the patient engagement division, um, as Tamara had spoken to, a lot of people may not know how they're interacting with our companies, but sometimes the CRCs that you see at the particular research site may be from us. They may be hired through our three-wire company and they're placed at that site as a, um, a remote CRC or an employee. So you're going to the research site or interacting with them but they can very well be a WCG employee who's placed at that particular location. Um, in addition to that, with Metavante Proface in particular, we have the largest cohort of expert clinicians. And so we have clinicians whose background have been, whether they were um, writing a book at Columbia or creating a scale at or Princeton or whatever it was, they're a part of our expert cohort of clinicians where they try to take the bias out of clinical trials by making themselves available to um, step in and facilitate ratings for the patients at the site. And they do that remotely. So our engagement with the patient is so robust that I don't know if a lot of people actually know where these people are coming from. They're just, <laughs> they're like, okay, we're at the site and you see everything that's happening, but who are the vendors or the um, other organizations that are contributing? So that's where we stand there. And I have to say, with our project management, we are hiring <laughs> about 10 plus 
project managers, associate project managers, some experience is necessary, but there are an array of positions. Like I mentioned, when I came, went into Metavante Proface, I had to transfer my skills from site to corporate. And it, I was able to do it seamlessly. So don't count yourself out if you don't have, you know, corporate or administrative experience, um, just go for it. But definitely um, we have a lot of positions opening up and I'm excited. I hope to see some of you guys coming through, some names coming through. Um, but yeah, so that's our patient engagement division and highlighting some of our project management positions. And um, thank you for having us tonight. We're very excited to be with you all. Thank you, Desiree. And I don't know if you guys can sense a theme here, but we're doing some shameless commercialing about some open positions and opportunities. So write down these names. We, we hope that uh, you might connect with some individuals that can even tell you more insight. But uh, moving right along, I want to introduce Rochelle, and she's here uh, representing our scientific and regulatory division. So Rochelle. Good evening, everybody. Good to be here. And listen, I just want to share with you all, uh, I work with Statistics Collaborative as their receptionist. Now, how did I come upon that? Hmm. I rose through uh, positions outside of this, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, WCG uh, experiences. I come from a corporate world that uh, high-paced uh, magazine and advertising, <laughs> graphic design, designing uh, ad ads and dealing with ad agencies and high-paced, fast, deadline-driven career. I decided, hmm, I need something new for my life. Let me figure it out. <laughs> and so I looked at how to refresh my career. Hmm, what do I want to do with the rest of this life here? So I took a look. And I was hired by uh, Statistics Collaborative. So just the year that I've been here, it's excited me. I've, uh, gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm diving deeper into what WCG offers and I'm excited about it. And some of the things I even have learned through this process, uh, brand new brain here, uh, looking at some other career opportunities and some other ways to uh, learn, uh, the opportunities to learn, I see and I'm excited about what is offered here at WCG. When I hear about what's going on and what kind of research and the clinical research and I'm learning, I'm like, wow, this is great. This is great uh, coming from Hmm, the high-paced uh, advertising world, <laughs> and I, uh, I'm very excited about it. I, I come, I have project management experience. I've uh, directed departments, uh, production departments, and graphic design departments, and I am looking forward to the mentorship and the new learning, learning that uh, I can get through WCG. So I am creating a new area in my life and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and Rochelle, we couldn't be more excited. And we felt it important for you guys to see and hear Rochelle's story because we know there are a number of members who are saying, I'm trying to break in. I did something completely different. And so Rochelle works at one of our companies, Statistics Collaborative, that specifically I mentioned doing, uh, looking at those statistics. If you ever you know, turned on CNN and they were talking about, you know, the COVID trials and how can they, you know, get them through the emergency use process. It was companies like Statistics Collaborative. We can't give away if we did that study or not. But, you know, companies like that, that were looking at that information, their biostatisticians and, and physicians that were interpreting that real data that comes out of the clinical trial and, and give advice um, to the sponsors and certainly to the FDA. So, Rochelle, really excited to have you a part and um, a, a, a part of our ERG as well. So, and last but not least, we wanted to round out our, our group of people because we, we know there's a wide vast of experience, but we wanted to highlight the corporate shared services. So while we have a number of divisions, we have a lot of areas like finance, HR, um, IT, that uh, we have a number of women who come from a lot of different backgrounds that are contributing at WCG. So, Shanae. Hi everyone and thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. 
Um, I am right now the director of product development at WCG. Um, I work within the shared services organization and I have applications that, that touch all five divisions that um, Tamara talked about. So I have a team that works in safety. I have a team that works in site feasibility. I have a team that works on the IRB um, applications. I have a team that works on patient engagement applications. Um, every division, uh, I, I, my teams support the software and um, the maintenance of the applications that are used to um, do all the, the great work that WCG does. Uh, as part of my team, I'm in the engineering group. And um, so I'm responsible for developers. I came um, up the ranks as a developer myself. Um, but across my group, we have testers, we have product managers, we have project managers, we have business analysts. I mean, we just have a variety of roles that um, support the software development. A lot of people think it's just developers, but by far there's a, there's a wide range of um, opportunities. Um, our best, even if you're not, you say, hey, I'm not a technical person. Um, we have roles that are not completely technical. Um, our best business analysts and um, product managers and testers, they all come from the business. We're always trying to get people who understand um, the business because it's very difficult to teach uh, to, to teach those skills where you know it, it might be a little bit easier to take someone who understands the business and apply as long as they're you know uh, they have the right attitude and they they have the right drive to to fill some of the other roles that that we have but um, yeah we have a wide range of positions open and um, I'd be happy to talk anyone through any of those. Um, so my career, it start, I started at um, one of the companies that WCG acquired as a senior solutions architect. And um, just over time made my way up to director um, where I manage a team across the US. I have people on the West Coast. I have people in Texas. I have people in Virginia. I also have offshore developers in the Ukraine and Romania. So my team is very um, diverse and, um, and, and located you know, in, in various low locations. So we're almost a 24 hour operation, which makes my job a little bit hard because um, I'm kind of you know, in and out all day long, but, um, but it, it's interesting and, and, and it supports the organization. And we, we always have people that are you know, ready to jump in and help. Um, I actually, you know, a lot of people talked about where you come from. I, I worked for a CRO for a little bit. I worked for another software development company that supported clinical trials. But um, most of my life, my you know, life sciences experience has been with ePharma Solutions and WCG. Um, I've been with the company for about six years now. And, um, but before that I was in finance. So I came here from, you know, a, a long career in as, as a software developer, architect, um, manager in the finance world. And I just decided that, I don't know, finance wasn't for me. I didn't feel like I was helping um, people. Even though if you work for a lot of those finance companies, I think they feel they get the feeling that people feel that way and they'll say, oh, you're making markets. But I just felt like I was making rich people richer. And um, it just, I, I didn't feel the, the part of, of making markets. So um, I jumped over to life sciences. It was a completely different world, but um, I feel every day that in my own little way, and I'm not at the, you know, I'm not at the forefront. I'm not on the, I'm not at the sponsor or the sites, but I do feel like, in my own little way, I'm providing, um, I'm helping the world, you know, whether it's my system that sends out safety letter distributions when, um, when, when things go wrong in a, in a clinical trial or don't, they don't go as expected, which is pretty important, or um, I have an app or, or my application that selects the sites or my application that takes in, um, you know, the, the data for the, the IRB. I, I just feel like, um, you know, I, I'm making that difference. And um, WCG has been it has been a great place to work. It highlights that um, you are making that difference and how you're making that difference. You, I see in town hall meetings or across the company, you just feel like you are um, you, you are you are helping someone. 
And um, yeah, we, we have a variety of roles. It's a shameless plug as Tamara says, but um, I have development positions open and you know, my, a lot of my counterparts have positions open across the other roles that I mentioned here. So um, I, oh, I'm open if you, for, for you, if you feel free, if you wanna talk about it more or um, you have any questions. Thank you, Shanae, and, and, and I couldn't have put that shameless plug even more to use if I didn't tell you, well, how do you go find out about these jobs, ladies? Uh, please go to our website, um, WCG Clinical, and there's a section about careers and talk a little bit about who we are, but I want to highlight some of the things you hear in the this meeting before network, right? So, you know, if you connect with Shanae or Brittany or Rochelle or, who, or Desiree, you know, any of us, to uh, understand a little bit more about the role, you know, especially if they're in a certain area you have an interest in, it always helps if you have a referral name, take it from the person in HR in your application. They're gonna look at that before they look at somebody who doesn't. So um, we, we wanna shamelessly tell you, you know, we have a lot of opportunities available at WCG and we hope that by getting the word out even more, and particularly because our ERG is focused on bringing more people that look like us into WCG, that by reaching out to you, I'm not lying, we have 15 new jobs we just opened up in the IRB division that require no experience, just six months administrative anywhere. Um, or the project management roles at Desiree, I know there are at least eight or 10 various levels of project management jobs. So. Um, shamelessly check out our website if you have any interest about those opportunities. And we are here, Danielle, and ready to take any questions from the members. All right, let me see. I know we have some questions, but it looks like we, the previous one, looks like um, we answered them. I know it was questions about the website, the answer where you can go. I know a lot of people wanted to know if the positions are remote, especially the position that you talked about that are six months of administrative mm -hmm. experience. Is that a remote position? Yes. So well, uh, right now, just to be transparent, every single one of our offices are closed, like probably many of yours. And we've made an announcement. We won't even think about opening our offices until July. So that's mm -hmm. just our entire remote workforce strategy. And so while we do have large campuses right outside of Seattle in Puyallup, um, I think, um, and Brittany, keep me honest, Brittany's in Texas, right? Brittany, you're in Texas, right? Yes, yeah. but I start. yeah, I started at the campus you started at that Puyallup, campus, but I live in Texas. Yeah, and we have a big campus in uh, Cary, North Carolina, but literally at this point, we have people all over the US. So um, I will say for the right talent, we believe in getting the right person. And we have adjusted to make sure that they are able to work no matter where they are. Okay. Okay. So someone specifically is saying that they searched the operations specialist on the website and nothing came up. They wanted to know if they're missing something. So you have to, well, you know, certainly you can look, there are a couple different features in our, uh, in our website. So one of the things you want to look for is you can either look by company you can look and feature by name, um, or you can look by location, even though most of them, they're going to note the office of location where we would be if we were in an office right now. So uh, you could probably just put in the word IRB, um, and, and you'll see a link. I actually have a direct link, and I'm happy to put it in the chat directly to that position, and there'll be a little blue button where you can say apply. So I'm happy to share, especially because we are in high recruitment demand for those positions on the ethical review side. So we, we really are hoping there might be individuals that are interested. So I'm happy to put that in the chat as well. Yes, I know people really want to get in in the clinical research industry. So we have another question. Does your company have any research laboratories? No, we don't do the research. We support the research, we don't do the research. I will say we do, and Brittany, I don't know how much you touch. We do also have an IBC. And so they do, uh, if you're familiar with IRBs, IBC is really like the ethical review, but at a genetic level. Um, I'm gonna go a couple years back. If you remember the scare. So we were actually one of the biosafety groups that was brought in to help um, some of those level four bio labs actually establish and create 
some of their testing facilities. I mean, these are some of the consultative type things that people come to us, um, like the Nurses Association, to help them understand how to gown and ungown going into those high level uh, environments. So we, we, we touch a variety of different things in a lot of different ways, but we are not on the bench doing any of the research. We leave that to, to the R&D groups of sponsors. So Desiree mentioned positions for clinicians. Is that just for MDs, RNs, any positions for PAs? I'll jump in, Tamara. Um, so a lot of our clinician positions, um, they do remote assessments for scales. Um, the background of the individual varies. We've definitely had MD, PhD, um, some PAs as well. Um, the focus for that particular position is usually like cognitive or experience with Alzheimer's or dementia patients. So it looks more at um, master's level or above. So that can be a PA or any other degree. There's counselors who have applied, social workers who have, um, we have an, a vast uh, array of backgrounds. And you just have to fit the amount of years in a particular clinical area. So I would say go on the website and it should be under um, clinician. And um, I'm not sure how many of them are open in the U.S. right now, but just know that they, they're free, they frequently open up. So, yeah, you can have a vast of different backgrounds for that position. Okay, someone asks, who would be the best person to get in contact with for interest in PV? So for pharmacovigilance, we actually have a company, Vigilaire. That's what they do. I mean, they, they <laughs> um, uh, well, I can tell you right now, I don't necessarily know that our, um, that, that particular group has immediate openings, but what I would do is uh, connect with me and I can connect you with some people there. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we, that is a part of the scientific and regulatory business that is growing. And so I can, connect you with individuals, especially if that is, that is a very specialized area if you work in PV. So not sure. what to do, yeah. So I am a contracts and budget specialist with experience with regulatory. I would love to learn to work for an IRB. I would prefer not starting entirely at the bottom. What type of positions could I look to apply to? Okay. Um, so you really would need to look on the website and see um, which different positions, because right now I just know there's a lot of the IRB operations positions, but if you can, like how WCG works, you literally can start at any one of our companies and you can move over. But with ethical review, like I said, I've, I was in the IRB operations and within a year, like literally a year, I was a QA specialist. So even if, like, I know most people don't want to start at the bottom, bottom, but there's a lot of growth. And so it doesn't, it's not, it's a lot of advancement. So with, I, because I have a master's degree. So I started as an IRB operations um, specialist. Well, it was a different name, but that one. And then I moved within a year to a QA specialist. And then from two years from that, I was an expedited reviewer because of my degree and because of my experience. So it was even though I did start at the bottom, my advancement was pretty quickly because of my education and my experience. That's good. I know a lot of people struggle with going into an entry level position, but if you know that there's gonna be growth and it's worth it, let's see. I am an entomologist who would love to connect with entry level opportunity. I guess they're kind of asking what could be their, I guess, um, position that they could apply to. <laughs> I, I gotta laugh. I, at first, I said, "Whoa, I can't even spell that." But uh, I'm like, "Did I say it right?" That's why I'm over here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you know, I, 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 it's hard to say. I mean, you know, I, I do a lot of career co counseling and coaching with staff, and and part of it is just understanding what you have an interest in. As you can see, I mean, we have over twenty something different subsidiary companies that make up WCG, and so. You know, with that kind of a background, I, you know, it, it, it really is a matter of, do you really like dealing in details? Are you a people person? Do you like interacting with clients? I mean, there's probably marketable skills that could align in a lot of different ways. So a lot of this is about thinking about what you know you like to do and what you know you don't want to do. 
And once you get some clarity around that, it may help to crystallize what kind of resonates with you. Um, so my best advice is to talk to people, you know, ask them what they do all day. Ask them, you know, the kind of projects. I mean, they may tell you the client list, but they can tell you this is what I spend my time doing all day. Um, and that helps to inform whether or not it's something for you. And Tamara, I want to add, um, I don't know the full breadth of, um, I can't even say it, but we have, <laughs> at Metavante Proface, we have a sales management and translations team. Um, so I believe it revolves around linguistics and um, different uh, origins of words. So that particular team is so specific. Um, I don't think they have any openings at the moment, but with that type of background, that will be within WCG, the type of department I would see someone with this degree, you know, maybe liking or, um, or leaning toward as a start at least to get the, a foot in. I know it's a couple of members in the group that have their PhD and they're trying to get into clinical research. I want to say one is a medical speech pathologist. And I guess they were just trying to see, I guess, with what kind of position that they could apply to. Yeah, I, I give the same advice. I mean, you know, I'm a JD. And, and so there are a lot of, we can, you know, we can advance ourselves in a lot of different ways. But, you know, I think our education really is just preparing us to apply those skills to whatever we choose to apply it to. So I, you know, without knowing what your PhD is in, it could be in education, I don't know, but you might be the best trainer that we need to help patients and sites train them on the protocols. So, I, you know, it, it, I, what I would say is, and, and, I, and I mean this with sincerity, you know, I've connected with a number of people through this group. You know, we find the time, and I hope you're seeing, this is just a small representation, um, Tina, of our ERG and our members that we would love to, connect you with somebody that can, you know, tell you a little bit more about it. You know, I have a broad picture because I'm with everyone globally. However, we have, you know, a really nice, uh, expansive group of women that look like us in our ERG that we can connect you some way, shape or form. So, um, you know, uh, that would be my best advice. It, it's just hard in the absence of having a one-on-one -on -one conversation to give you any specifics but we, we were excited to at least come to the conversation and have you think about that, don't get me wrong, great opportunities that these farmers and CROs, we need them to exist because they are our clients. But if you're not getting the traction that you want or you don't necessarily want to be at a 15,000 person company, we are 1,400 employees globally. So we're in that sweet spot from a mid-sized company where we can create and develop growth opportunities um, so that you, you can come in with experience, that's great, but you don't have to have it either. Um, so we just hope that you will think about these other careers besides the traditional tracks. And can I add something? And my coming from a whole totally different uh, uh, arena, just the short time that I've been with WCG, I have seen so much growth, so much, I've, I've seen so much that it, it is very encouraging. So keep that in mind. It's, it's a lot going on, a lot of interaction, a lot of information. And I have seen so much growth just in this year that I've been with, within. So I'm excited about it. And you, you all take a look at what's being offered. And you I will- like to, I'm sorry, I'd like to piggyback off of what uh, Rochelle is saying that um, I came into uh, WCG Metavante Pro Phase um, about almost two years ago. Um, and um, I'm the office manager. And I have to say that the opportunities that I have been presented with, even just working alongside um, uh, departments and really growing my experience has really afforded me the opportunity to now start to uh, see what, what else I would like to do within the company. So it, it's not just about uh, staying in one position only and watching everybody else grow or uh, just dipping and dabbing. But it's really about being positioned to work within departments, work within groups uh, and grow yourself to see, okay, this is where I, I can see myself in a couple in a couple of months or a year or however long. But um, there are definite a, a bunch of opportunities here to uh, to start and to learn. And so, 
I just wanted to add that. So when did uh, Black Women in WCG, when did that start? I think we launched in November, November or last year or October. Oh my God, I'm the chair and I can't even um, remember what, what month. That's about right. Cause we, we, um, we started our first ever diversity and inclusion council really in response to the whole joke. We started our first ever diversity and inclusion council. I'm getting feedback. Yeah, I'm about to mute them. And okay. so, um, and I, I'm not gonna lie, everybody, you can call me to the carpet. I literally, I, I have a relationship with our CEO. I wrote to our CEO and was like, we got to do something. We can't be silent. Is one of the black VPs in the company. We got to do something. What we going to do? And he said, man, we're going to do something. Can you lead it up? And I'm like, okay, that's what I get for opening my mouth. And so um, we started the Diversity and Inclusion Council. And uh, Tina's one of our uh, members of that council. And as a part of that council, we've started now six different uh, employee resource groups. So we have them related to working parents, people with disabilities, the LBGTQIA+. Um, so we have a variety of different ones, but I have, I, you know, and I'm not bragging on us just because we are, the, but we probably, we got together quick and we have literally delivered on a variety of different things. And, and it's exciting because, you know, we're, we're getting ready to uh, really have a conversation in our office about hair um, and what what they think professional hair is and and uh, Brittany's actually helping us with that um, uh, she has connects with that natural hair documentary that that is out um, so we're trying to bring the producer in and have some conversations on a global basis so we can talk about black women's hair I mean they're just a variety of different things that our ERG um, has uh, been able to advance in a short amount of time and, um, you know, we're excited because our momentum is, is continued to grow. And the other, candidly, the other ERGs look at us and like, what are they doing? You know, can we, you know, what, what, are, they, what are they working on next? Because um, we have a lot of motivated women that said, you know, it's good to have a voice, but what we do with that voice is really the, the, the proof. It's the real results. And so um, we lead by example. And, and Tina, um, I just want to acknowledge, she's not giving herself some credit because I, I told her just a week ago, um, Tina called on the division president, uh, Terry Minch of our patient engagement division. This is a woman who prior to joining WCG was, was running a large portion of the GE business. So, you know, very, very senior executive. And she literally texted her and said, I need to talk to you. Can you call me? And she got, uh, she stopped what she was doing in that moment and got on the phone with Tina and Tina asked her to do something. She immediately said yes. So when I tell you that these women um, of WCG, you know, I think they're continuing to be recognized and particularly here. So we, we need more women like us that are motivated, that are passionate about being in this industry and can make a difference. And um, we want to, when we get back in the office, we want to see you in the hallways. So. All right. I have uh, two people that one that raised their hand to have a question. So I'll go ahead and let Randy. Hello, my name is Randy. Um, I currently work um, in the phys physician recruitment um, side of healthcare, and I was looking to get into clinical research. Do you guys have any idea of where I should probably look um, to kind of get into clinical research? I also work with contracting as well. Um, performing the contracts for physicians, but um, I kind of wanted to stay within that arena, but I'm not sure of what, um, what we would have to offer for me for, for, from a clinical research standpoint. I, I feel like they kind of already touched on that. If you're interested in getting involved in clinical research then to go on the websites, and I know we kind of listed the positions that would be good for someone that is looking to enter in the industry. So if you want to, please feel free to reach out to any one of the speakers. I just want to kind of go through these questions because there's like 34 of them that I'm, that I'm seeing, like 34 new messages. But um, if anyone is interested in the entry level positions, please, we'll, we'll give more information and, and just check the chat because I know that Andrika has been responding to people also. Um, let me see. And I, I hope that's okay, Randy, if, um, if you're okay with us kind of, you know, I know we touched on entry-level positions. 
Okay, she's on mute. Okay, so we have another person that raised their hand, uh, Carlene. I believe the majority of the questions were answered for me. Um, considering they're all entry levels, I'm just con um, wondering, like, uh, I guess <laughs> financially, will it be like a pig? Like, I, I work for an insurance company right now. And I don't feel growth where I am and I have been desperate to find something to build to, I need a career path. That's my biggest thing. And <clears throat> like right now I make $55,000 a year, no 58,000, sorry. And I'm trying to think if I started an entry level position at your company, will I be getting a loss? Even though there's a lot of growth to be made down the road. So I'm just trying, kind of trying to figure that part out for myself because I do have a home and three kids and I'm a single mom. So that's something I also wanted to ask. I don't know if you all can answer it, but I just thought I should ask anyway. <laughs> you know, I, I'm probably, I can talk comp, but you know, I think the biggest thing when it comes to comp is it is our philosophy when we think about talent acquisition that we recognize for some of our experience position, the talent exists in the CRO and pharma market. And so we stay abreast of kind of what the market is doing in terms of benchmarking where we need to be relative to commiserate salary for any of our positions. That would ring true at entry level versus senior level positions. So, um, you know, we can talk about it, but what I would say is from a comp strategy, WCG says, we got to pay what it takes to get the talent in the door and keep you in the door. And so there's a difference between hanging some, you know, number out there and then you never make any movement down the road, right? So that's something that we are constantly challenging ourselves is, you know, where are we relative to lagging or leading the market being competitive with our compensation and benefits, right? That's the other part of it. I mean, I can tell you we have a very comprehensive benefit program. You won't find, and I'm going to say this, and I don't care if you're with the farmer on here, you're probably not going to find a better insurance plan than we offer here in the U.S. It is a $300 PPO deductible plan that costs $25 a month for an employee. You can't even buy that on the marketplace. Sure cannot. <laughs> so, you know, we benchmark ourselves because, right, we're not the, the big 15,000, you know, companies, right? So we know there are certain places where you have to make investment in people. You have to grow them. You have to give them good benefits. You have to create opportunities. And so that's where we put our dollars. And I will say, we haven't raised our insurance premiums on our employees at least four years. I mean, and we've had million dollar increases year over year over year because it's that important to us to be in the healthcare industry and to give our people good insurance so they can go to the doctor when they need to go to the doctor. So, I, you know, I'll stop my commercial, but I can tell you that from a comp benefits all these kind of things, we're looking at and saying, in order to compete with these other kind of companies, we have to be competitive. It just is going to depend the role, where you are, that kind of stuff. So I want to be conscious of the time. I know it's 7.01. How much more time do you guys have to answer questions? Because it's, it's quite a few in the chat. Or would you just tell me kind of, you're good? Okay, all right, let's dive in. All right, are these opportunities friendly to grad students on F1? Y'all asking a lot of HR questions, so I guess that's me. So if you're a foreign national, <laughs> I do all the immigration work because I'm also a lawyer. So yes, we sponsor OPT, we'll do H1B transfers, we do prom, so we want the best talent, wherever that is. So if you're a foreign national and you need sponsorship, Absolutely. I will say we did have to suspend our internship program because usually we bring in students throughout the year, but we felt like we can't really do that in a way remotely that would be really advantageous. So we've suspended our internship official program right now just because we didn't feel like people would commit the kind of time they'd have to do it right in a remote setting. But, you know, I think whenever we do open our offices back up, we're going to get back into uh, doing more of our internship programs. Okay, um, let's see. It's still more entry level positions. We already touched on that. So someone is talking about that you encourage only those who reside in North Carolina, but I thought we said that the positions were, okay, remote, okay. Okay, won't well, see. 
are there any senior director or equivalent level positions within any departments that were mentioned? You mean black people that hold those positions or do we just have the senior director title? I think they're saying, are there any senior director positions available? I think they're interested in applying to a senior director position. Oh, um, let me think about that. I know we have some in business development. Yeah, I was thinking BD definitely. If you, yeah, mm -hmm. we're always hiring in sales. Um, <laughs> I, I'd have to think about it. You know, some of our, our more senior leadership positions, they're, they're not always going to be on the website. These are uh, handled with, uh, uh, I'll say, kit gloves and, and care. And so, you know, I am recruiting some executive level positions. Um, like right now, we are in the process of hiring a chief marketing officer um, to report to the CEO. So, I mean, yeah, you know, Yes, there are probably, I'd have to go through and look at all of our jobs. They, they, not everything is going to land on our website. So if you have a lot of experience, what I would tell you is get it into somebody because it's, it's always timing, right? It's having opportunity at the right time. And so, you know, if we have your resume, we can call you when we, when we might need something, um, but not off the top of my brain. I, I'd, I'd have to go back and really look at everything again. So you can put your resume in the talent pool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hope everyone is jotted this information down. So, you know, definitely if you apply, if you, I guess if you meet the requirements for the positions, then they'll reach out to you. And let's see, they're asking about certifications. Are certifications for these positions required? Desiree, did you want to speak on the uh, PMI uh, sure. application? That's a big one, yeah. Yeah. For a lot of our positions, it's not required, but it is preferred. Um, however, if you have a breadth of experience, <laughs> please apply because, you know, we like to have a balance and we do offer some internal certification programs. So um, for the right candidates, we will sponsor you. Um, to receive your certifications. Uh, so no, not required, but preferred um, for a lot of our positions. Okay, thank you. Let's see. How do you see WCG evolving over the next five years? Now, I, one of the things I'm fortunate to do is I'm a part of the executive you know, team. And so, you know, we are constantly growing organically and, and through a lot of acquisition. I'm in the middle of an acquisition right now. And so um, the company we will be in even two years is gonna look different from today. What I can tell you is, no, we're not gonna be a CRO, but what we again look for are those best in class organizations that really complement our mission. And so um, we will continue our focus on saying, there are processes and, and systems in this clinical trial process that are broken and we are committed to making it better and faster and more efficient. So um, I don't know, Brittany, though, they're, they're, we've got the best of the IRBs out there. So I don't think there's going to be any more acquisitions in that space, but we are constantly looking at companies that, that you know, complement our mission and, and share the same values. So we will continue to grow primarily probably through acquisition. So I guess I can say from like an employee standpoint, like I definitely can say from when I started um, in 2013 to now, it definitely has grown and changed. And um, like I said, it's like Tamara's talking a lot about the HR point of view, but you know, with the things is it's a lot of focus on employees and employees growth. And so it's about like, and that could be if like right now expedited reviewer, but I'm also interested in project management, like, there's stuff there to like stuff in our, you know, in our system that helps us get to our next level. They, they do not suppress you getting to your next level. So you can literally talk to your director and be like, you know what I want to be? I want to be a regulatory chair. That's where I'm going to go. And, you know, and I'm working on my next level because like I said, I, when I started, I said, I want to be an expedited reviewer. I'm an expedited reviewer. So what's my next? And so that's what I'm working on now. But like, definitely like they, they get you in and they focus in their employee and making them to their next level. So. So is everyone comfortable with people reaching out to them like through LinkedIn 
Do you have a preference? Can people, um, can you drop your LinkedIn uh, link so people can reach out to you? Because it seems like a lot of people want to know like for specifically for their situation with their experience where, I guess where they kind of fit in. It seems like that's that's what happens a lot with people. They They might not have, you know, clinical research experience, but they have other experience, but they're just not sure of how to put that, what, where those transferable skills really fit along the line. I think that has a lot to do with a lot where people kind of struggle with, how can I get involved in clinical research with the experience that I already have? So if everyone can and put their LinkedIn link in, I think that would be good for people to reach out. And so let's see, I got a question from Rashida who is our admin mentor. Hey there. Uh, <laughs> first, thank you everyone for this. I think I, I, I did not expect the wealth of knowledge and, and really I didn't expect to understand a lot more about WCG than I do now. So thank you for that. Also, I'm so excited for some of my mentees to run to this website. So I'm going to send that to them, especially these entry level positions. So much appreciation to really stating that multiple times that we're okay if, if you don't have clinical research experience, you have, you know, transferable skills. So appreciate that. My question is about kind of the work life balance. Um, some of you have worked at the CRO level and the pharmaceutical level. How do you feel like your, your, your work in, in life balance is with WCG? Um, I can't, I guess I can just jump in really quick. Um, I, 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 you know, I think that my work life balance is, you know, it, it balances out. Um, I don't really, you know, I put in the hard work when I have to, I don't have a problem with doing those extra hours after work, or if I have to open up my laptop on the weekend to get something done, but I never feel uh, forced or stressed or anxious about getting it done. I think that, I think that it all depends on, it's a case by case basis, right? And what you, what boundaries you set for yourself. And so, you know, you can work all night and work all day and that can just be who you are and you don't have a problem. Or you can be like me, you know, I, 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 I will put in the work when it's needed. I have no problem putting in that extra effort, but I do um, think it's very important to set a boundary when you know that it's time to kind of pull out, come back, take a breath and then, uh, and then get back in. But I, for me, I'm, I'm, you know, I can only speak for myself. My work-life balance is, uh, it's, it's pretty good. Well, I'll jump in too. My work-life balance is pretty good as well. I mean, I will not, um, I, I won't lie. The expectations at WCG are high. If there is a problem, especially in my group, um, we are expected to jump on it. But I must also say that, you know, I was on a call and this doesn't happen often, so I don't want to scare you guys, but I was on a call um, at 4 a.m. in the morning as we're trying to do a deployment and it doesn't work. And there's like 10, 15 people on the call but um, the people are amazing. We're like laughing, we're, we're, I mean, I won't say like everyone was like happy to be there, but it is, um, it was an experience. We're laughing, we're, you know, kidding around with each other and we're working. And the other thing that um, I wanna stress is that, okay, we were all on that call really late, but we were all like happy to, to like that we were fixing something and that when it was over that we had you know, figured out the problem. And um, WCG, me as a, as a director to my team, as well as, you know, my, you know, executive management and senior level management, um, they're open to, hey, you're you up at 4 a.m., you know, come on, come in late or, you know, take some extra time. I think um, after that, that day we were um, up really late, um, Friday, I was just like, hey, I told my I mean, senior manager, I was just like, look, I need to, um, I mean, it was a VP. And I'm like, look, I need to take a laptop break. I just need a laptop break. And he's like, take it. It's on me. You know, you, you worked really hard. Take that break. And honestly, there was another problem that happened that same day. And he did not call me at all. Like, I, not only did he not call me, but he told everyone, don't send emails because he knew I would answer it. So I didn't know there was, that was like Friday. I said I was taking a laptop break. I didn't know there was a problem until Monday. 
And I thought that that was amazing that, um, you know, they would, he would take that on as VP, senior VP, um, and, and not contact me because I just said I needed a break. So I, um, I do think, like Tina said, you're going to make your own work-life balance. You have to set your boundaries. But when you do set those boundaries, I feel like WCG respects them. And it is a very uh, employee-friendly organization. Even uh, on the uh, employee portals, uh, they have, gosh, opportunities for you. If you need to talk to someone else, if you need to reach out to people, if you need some balance, it seems that they provide it for you. And the work gets done. And like uh, Sinead just explained, and I've seen it just in the short period of time that I've been with them. It is definitely an employee friendly uh, organization. All right, I'm gonna call us to the carpet of Brittany. I need you to tell them it's exploding in the ethical review, right? Yeah. Um, so, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, like, like everyone said, um, sometimes, like right now in the IRB world, we, we can, there's a lot of, there's a lot coming in. And, you know, because of COVID, there is a lot coming in. And so it is definitely the, you have to make your boundaries and stick to them because if you don't, you're going to be working all night and then you'll wake up in the morning and be like, I got to do this all over again. So they definitely, even on our like weekly calls, they remind us, you need to have boundaries. It's okay. Go or like, go take your time because we need you. Like the people who are in these clinical research studies need you because without you, these things aren't going out. So it's definitely um, a lot of work. It's definitely intense. There's a lot of work to do. Um, but like everyone said, there's a work-life balance and I'm a single mom too. So I definitely um, cut up my day. And my director um, is very, well, my director is very accommodating to that, that I do have to cut up my day sometimes because I am homeschooling and taking her to different ideas, taking her to appointments, have to do my own appointments. And, and literally it's sometimes I cut up my day three or four times and it's okay because of my work ethic and what I'm doing and getting my work done. So it's definitely been a very um, interesting ride during COVID, but, but it definitely can feel the support from you know, everyone around us that, hey, you know, you get, your life is your life and you, we are a part of your life, but this isn't your life. So that's basically what it is. And just to um, just add something else, I actually have a competitive gymnast and that schedule is crazy. Like she has to be at the gym, you know, it's easy now because we're, you know, in COVID and everyone's home, but even when we were back in the office, she has to be in the gym like four days a week, you know, at certain times. And I feel like the company was accommodating to that. Like, as long as I'm working hard, like I know when I can't leave and I don't leave and I find other alternatives, but when I can, um, when I need to leave, um, I, you know, of course it's your, you make that reputation, right? Everyone knows that I work really hard, but when I need to leave, I need to be out the office and I say, hey, look, I, I have to get out of here at three o'clock because I have to be home to you know, drive her wherever. Um, it's I, I'll even have um, people in the meeting say, "Hey, look, it's three o'clock. You said you had to be you had to be off." And I'll log in later. But the flexibility to be able to do that is amazing. And I'll I'll be on a call in a car <laughs> like that. You know, of course, I'm doing things like that. But um, the flexibility to be able to do that kind of stuff, I think, um, is is it, it makes the company great. Also, um, just to piggyback off of what Shanae said, uh, it, everyone here, uh, everyone I've experienced with, every, everyone is so supportive of if you have something to do, if you have to run out the office, if you can't be in the office that day, or if you can't make it to a meeting because you have a personal uh, conflict or a personal uh, obligation, it's never, well, you can't do it. Or uh, my experience is never, it, it has never been like that. It's always been supportive absolutely go take care of your family. If they know that you're putting in the work and they know that you're a hard worker, like Shanae said, they, it's no problem. Life happens. 
I, I, the only thing I would like to add is a comparison because I have worked in pharma and a CRO. And um, I think what makes WCG different is, let's be honest, whatever you give us, we are gonna take. So if you can work 50 hours, we are gonna want 55, all right? So I don't wanna switch up and let y'all not think that it ain't a lot of work. It's a lot of work going on. That said, um, I think what makes people feel differently about it is that we care about the person, not just the work, right? So, and I, and I see a couple of our other uh, members of our Black Women of ERG are on the line and they can, I hope that, you know, they would echo as well, in addition to our panelists, that I'm willing to do more when I feel like somebody cares about me so that when I have a moment or a situation and I need to do whatever, they give me that, that freedom, the flexibility to do it because not only have I earned it and, and my work performance demonstrates my you know, worthiness of that, but I also think it's because they also know that my ability to not be distracted or take care of those things mean I'm gonna be more focused and productive when I'm back. In a CRO, my experience was, you know, it was a smaller CRO as opposed to some of the bigger ones. They didn't necessarily care, right? You got a certain deliverable. I mean, when the trip reports are, are due, they're due. When you got to lock the database, you got to lock the database, right? And in some of these organizations, they don't necessarily care about the person. That's not every organization. Um, and so it, you just have to decide what you value more. And we have chosen as a business to recognize, and our CEO will say, it, we want to treat our employees like they're family. You don't get to pick your family sometime. You got to deal with what you got to deal with. But we try to care about the individual and try to do certain things that make it easier while we're trying to go through and, and get things done. Well, I think that's very important, having a good work-life balance and flexibility. I know that it could be a deciding factor for people and when they're applying to the positions. So I just want to thank everyone. Thank all of the speakers for sharing with us about WCG. I hope people really got a full understanding of the positions that are available, please take advantage and feel free to reach out to any one of the speakers. Like just go, it's okay to, and they're, they're giving you the green light. It is okay to send them a message. I know some people hesitate with, you know, sending people a message like, is it okay? Should I not send them a message? You know, do I shoot my shot? Do I not shoot my shot? So go ahead shoot your professional <laughs> shot like it is completely okay everyone wants to help everyone we all want to see each other win and that's what this is about that's why it's black women in clinical research that's why it's black women in wcg we want to see you grow in your career in these positions and just help people that's what that's what it's all about so i want to thank everyone again please feel free to reach out to us thank you so much for joining us tonight Thank All right, so ladies, and come on, jump on in there. <laughs> jump on in. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Good night. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>